Yeah. I can take the glasses. Oh, I can take these off. No, whatever you want. It's not. We're not. We're not going for production quality here. Why not? We're going let's, for content let's go quality. Let's go all out. Let's go all out. Because if the content. No, I will. As, as we grow. Let me see what you do. You say you make some notes. I mean, yeah. It took like a few little things. Don't look at that. On the way, I can't catch you off guard. Uh -huh. But the real. But the real basic. Uh, I don't follow the agenda so much, but. Um. It was. Uh, Thanks for being here, by the way. Of course, brother. Anytime. Roberto Sanz Sanchez. When did the Sanz kick in? Because I met Dude. Roberto Sanchez, right? Yes. Okay. This, this is the second conversation I've had today. Uh, I'm going with a, a new publicist. And he was the same thing. What's up with Sanz? Roberto Sanz Sanchez. And now Roberto Sanchez. So he said, that's confusing. We need to clear that up. Mm -hmm. And what happened was when Too Fast, we did Too Fast. That was like my first thing ever. Right. So they told me, you got to get on IMDb. I got on IMDb. And there's a ton of Roberto Sanchez. Right. So somebody said, no, you need to have something to stand out. So we put in Sans uh, uh, after Alejandro Sanz, a, a, yeah. a cantante. Sure. So I put Sans just to set me aside from everybody. But now you can make the argument that, you know, there's only really one Roberto Sanchez. There's only one. So he's like, why don't you just get rid of that Sans thing? Because it's, it's confusing. So anyway, that's, that's how that came about. How do you feel about it? Uh, this the same. I just, you know, it's something that I started, what, 20 years ago, mm -hmm. and I only think of it when somebody mentions it. Um, every once in a while, I'll see a credit that'll say Roberto San Sanchez, and I'm like, Who? oh, shit, and I forget that. Uh, you know. I mean, the names, I remember, so I, I, we met on Too Fast, Too Furious, mm -hmm. um, and when I, I there is an, that's number one on the bullet point, I but saw it. I saw it. going with um, names... I remember, um, you know, p trying to put that as my first credit. They didn't. You, I got a nice letter from Universal Studios saying that they don't give stand-in credits, mm. and most pictures do. Yeah. It was just weird. But um, I just remember there was a bunch of Andy Martinez's mm -hmm. all over IMDb. Um, but I'm junior, and okay. as soon as I added the junior to it, it just just like that, it makes and, a difference. Yeah. And now, like my SAG card and. All of that is, you know, because SAG registers your name. Mm -hmm. Nobody else can take Roberto Sanz Sanchez. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, um, but I think it's, I think it's cool. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's again, it's one of those things that um, that you don't really think about, but you know, you get a publicist or whatever, they're looking at all these little things, and they're like, "Yo, let's clean that up," you know. Even he was looking at my bio. He says, "You know, we can shorten it a little bit." And I said, "Okay, I'll shorten it, whatever." And, you know, with Instagram, he's trying to turn me on to, you know, how to really get more active. And, you know, I was mm -hmm. on MySpace till like last week, bro. I mean, you know, what I mean, I'm slow, bro, when it comes to stuff like that. So, um, yeah, sometimes those little changes can, can make a big difference. The name, um, I, you know, we identify when I, when I first moved out to L.A., um, you know, I wasn't Latino enough. I wasn't white enough. And I had mm -hmm. a publicist, my very first film, um, not a publicist, a manager. My first film credit is a, is a horror film, uh, and they changed my name to Michaels. So it's, I'm credited as Andy Michaels Jr. And I feel like right when the film came out and I saw the name in the credits, uh, credits I, I hated every fucking moment of it. I felt like... Why'd they do that? You know, I, I, they felt that, you know, I would get more, um, you know, a variety of work and I wouldn't be as typecasted and... Um, so the production didn't do that. Your no, your the managers. Did, did. Your manager. Yeah, did. they suggested it, and I oh, did it for dude. that one film. And I, I just remember during that time I was auditioning and I was saying, "Hi, my name is Andy Michaels Jr." And I was like, oh, "You know, who's Andy Michaels Jr.? That's not me." Yeah. Um, names are very important. But you know, that's that that kind of crap used to go on back in the day, man. Where there were some Latino actors that because they felt that you know that would either stereotype them in some kind of way that they would, you know, bring on a different name so that they would have these different types of opportunities. But uh, I've just, you know, I, I, you know, as you know, man, I started this thing, what, too fast? I was 38. That was two, I looked it up today. Yeah. I think we were filming in 2002. 2002. Right. So I was 38. When the film came out, I was 39. So, you know, I came in really late into this game. So I don't have a lot of those, uh, those, you know, that, that those things that some of these artists have. I'm not an artist. I'm an actor, but you know what I'm talking about. There's people that are into the art. Mm -hmm. You know, they they can write. They can do all these things, and and I'm just not that guy. I mean, I've had a whole life before this, well, I, so I can't get a lot of a lot of those little things that they feel it's important. I just 
I've been, uh, you know, I've watched um, some of your short films, and you know, you can write. You can write. Yeah, just, yeah. I just finished watching Heroes. Ah, thank you. Yeah. And um, do I do I mention the end of it or? I mean, yeah. I mean, you can. Well, I'll tell you what I really loved about it. Um, in the story, especially early on in the, in the beginning, you know, you kind of advise this kid to, y y you need to kick this guy's ass. <laughs> You know, fight, but don't fight. If you know, you weren't saying if you don't have to fight, don't fight. Yeah. But, and you know that was you know that was key because remember, I, well, remember I, I wrote this maybe a couple of years ago, mm -hmm. so I was actually concerned about that because of the Will Smith, or oh, the slap thing. So I was actually concerned about it because I do say, hey, listen, it's, uh, yeah, I don't want you to fight. You should never fight. But there is going to come a point where you are going to have to defend yourself. You've tried every way to get out of this situation and perhaps you're cornered. You've got no way out. So if that's the case, you know, throw the first part. I mean, what else are you going to do? But then, you know, you realize that that's not always the best advice. You know, uh, I'm a guy that's trying to befriend this young boy because I see a lot of myself in him. But... Uh, you know, I, I don't have no history as, as a father, so I'm giving them ill advice, you know, sometimes. Mm -hmm. But the casting was really good because when, when the little boy came in, yeah, he looked just like you. Oh. Might as well have been, I don't know, a grandkid or... Let me tell you, man, um, I cannot write. It's, I, I need to stop saying that I can't write and I don't want to oh. write. Okay. But I, um, when I started with the idea, um, I didn't have a kid or anything like that. I had me. Mm -hmm. And then when we were at a film festival and I'm watching a film. And I see Caleb Martinez. And I'm like, I told my girl, that's him. This is, look at him, he's gorgeous. Beautiful kid, I mean, just, you just wanna hug him. And I said, he's perfect for this. So of course, I reach out to the festival director. And I say, yo, I need to find out who is the kid in this movie. And he says, oh, I got the father's email. His name is Mr. Martinez, whatever. Mm -hmm. I said, all right, cool, man, I'll reach out to him, you know. But listen, I'm an old guy reaching out to you about your kid. You know, somebody reaches out for about a kid, you know, we're going to flex up. So I was like, okay, I'm, I'm sending this email. And I'm like, sir, my name is Roberto Sanchez. I've done this. I've done that. I'm giving him my whole resume. I'm a Desert Storm vet. I'm giving him the works. Yeah. I get an email back. Can you curse on this thing? I'm cursing okay. all day. <laughs> I get an email back. And he says, hey, asshole. Really? Are you going to read me your fucking resume? It's me, bro. It's Eddie. I'm like, Eddie, Eddie Martinez? That's your, I had just worked with Eddie like less than a year ago on a project. I just didn't know he had kids. Yeah. And it's his son. Yeah. And I believe he's got three other kids, three kids all together. I believe it's three. I hope I get that right. And they're all actors. They're all super talented. And I just fell in love with Caleb, man. Caleb's got that spirit about him that, you know, quiet, unassuming. Ah, just fell in love with him, man. He was phenomenal. Phenomenal, my friend. Yeah. Phenomenal. It was a... Your your progression in your um in your at least in your filmmaking uh, career, like you could see like the improvement in um you know the writing, the performances, the quality of the content, the production value, mm -hmm. and it just keeps getting better, better and better. Thank you. And like you're evolving. Yeah. Thank you, man. Thank you're you. Evolving. It's it's you know it 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 just got into its third festival, and uh, the overwhelming response that I have been getting is. What's next? We want to see yep. where this story goes. We well, left it to be continued. I know. I'm just, and then I'm I was just looking, shooting something. I was looking for another link. And I'm like, where's the rest Dude, of it? Dude, I was just, yeah, I was just, I just wanted to shoot something, you know. I just wanted to put something together. But now it's like, okay, you've got this. We love it. We love the characters involved. This is a TV show right now. Yeah. What do you got? So now I'm like, okay, well, let me see what's so on. I'm trying to come up with ideas so at least I can get six episodes, you know. And so, yeah, man, it's funny how sometimes... Even with Too Fast, you know, when, when I had my, my audition for Too Fast, I had never done any acting. The only thing I had done was the modeling and the commercials. So Too Fast was my first TV or film commercial. Mm -hmm. And it's funny, like even when my agent sent me, she said, hey, listen, you know, so you got an audition for this thing based on the look that I had. That's what it was. Right. And she says, just go. And I didn't know what to do. She says, okay, what, what do I do? He said, well, you go there, you know, I'm going to send you something. Memorize the lines. That was like, what are you talking about? You know, I'm so stupid, right? So I'm like, all right, yeah. So I'll memorize this stuff when I go. And she even said, uh, back then they had um, blockbusters. She said, go to the blockbuster and rent the first one. So that way you can see what these movies are about. And uh -huh. I was like, oh my God, that's a phenomenal idea, right? I didn't know. Dude, I, uh, I, I memorized the lines. I come in. 
I do the audition. And you know, okay, all right, that was that wasn't hard. That was easy. I go back to work. I was working in Miami Metro Rail. Yep. As one of the officers. I remember. And sure enough, bro, about two or three weeks later, I get another call from my 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 agent. And she was shocked because she knew I sucked. I'm not an actor. She says, like, yo, they want to see you again. And I'm like, why? And because they like you. Good. I said, I said, do the same thing. Don't get all crazy. Now do the same thing that you did before because there's something there that they like. Boom. I show up. This time when I walk in, there's a little um, short black gentleman sitting there. And I said, damn, I know this guy, but I don't know. You know, I don't know, bro. I don't know. I don't yeah. know. But he looks familiar. And it was John Singleton. Man, he looks up to me and he says, all right, man, you ready? And I'm like, yeah, you know. I wasn't nervous at all because I don't know what I'm doing. And there's a beauty there. Sure. You know what I mean? There's no expectation because I don't know what the hell's going on. I audition. Uh, it was a scene where, you know, I grabbed Paul Walker uh, by the neck. Or in, th in that case, you know, in the movie it changed. But I grabbed Paul Walker and I'm holding a gun to his head and I'm screaming obscenities. That's it. You know, in English. You know, blah, my walker dropped the gun. You know, that kind of stuff. And he's sitting there and he's shaking his head like. Now, I'm not nervous. But I can see that whatever I'm doing, this guy don't like it. I don't know who this guy is, but he don't like it. So he says, uh, can you do it in Spanish? And I said, yeah, okay. Maricón, tira la pistola, te voy a un tiro. And he's sitting there shaking his head like, no. And I'm like, now I'm starting to like, yo. I'm, I, 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 I didn't know how to make an adjustment because I didn't know what that was. Right. But then this is the beauty of John Singleton, man. He said, uh, where are your people from? And I said, I'm from Miami. I'm here. I'm, you know, my people are Cuban. And he said, I know a lot of Cubans. And when they get mad, they get fucking mad. Bro, I don't know what happened. A fucking light bulb lit up. Yep. And I grabbed this motherfucker. Marty up. I mean, spit was, it was disgusting. Just things were, I mean, that would have been COVID today. I mean, it was just things just flying all over the place. And he's sitting there shaking his head like, that's what I'm talking about. And dude, I'm fucking amped. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. Now what? Now he says, now get the fuck out. I'm right. like, oh, it's okay. You know, yeah. I left. Dude, I, something had happened in that room. And I walked out and I was like, whoa, what was that? I called the agent and I said, yo, I don't know. I think it went good. Boom. Another three or four weeks go by, dude. I'm coming to work. This is the night before. Let me set something up for you the night before. Uh, I'm working the night shift. And as you know, I'm in, I'm in the downtown area, which is a rough, back then it was a rough, rough area. And we get a call over the, over the walkie-talkie that there's an officer getting into a fight with someone that doesn't want to leave the thing. So at, during this time, I was thinking, I don't think I'm supposed to be here. I don't think I'm, I don't think I'm supposed to be doing this thing. Dude, I take off running. I couldn't wait for the other train to come because this guy's in the middle of a fight and it was only like less than a quarter mile i take off running down downtown trying to get to this guy mm. what oh no no nothing um he just wanted to touch no me. yeah no no he just wanted to feel up on this guy come on you want to you know it's making me nothing your shirt it's oh like you're so animated okay. i know man. as long as it's not rubbing on it so i can I hear you good and you're not hearing yeah anyway so anyway i take running. off running and dude when i get there the officer has the baton and this guy is bleeding from the head. Now that is a red zone. You know, when you use a baton, you're never supposed to hit anybody in the head. You're not supposed to hit him in the groin. He went straight for the head. I'm like, what the fuck? I'm like, what did you do, bro? He said he went for my gun. So at that point, it's game on, you know. But then this guy is bleeding and he starts doing, with the blood, he starts doing this shit. I got AIDS, motherfuckers. I'm like, okay, bro, time out. I don't even, I, I know how to defend. I've been trained. I was in the middle. I don't know what to do with this. Right. What? And that's when I say, yo, something's, something's not happening here. The next day, it's five o'clock. I come to work. I'm sitting on the train. Packed. There's a gentleman that's smoking a cigarette. And he can't, you can't smoke on the trains. It's not my sure. thing. You just can't. I already know what's going to happen, bro. I'm gonna, I look at him and I can tell I'm going to approach this guy nicely. And he's going to curse me out or something. He's got that look about him. Sure enough, man, I go up to him and say, I'm sorry, but you can't smoke on the train. He looks at me, tall black guy. He said, yo, fuck you, bitch. Yeah, okay, all right. So now I'm turning around. You know, Metro Rail guys have to wear the stupid looking hat and the whole thing. Yeah. Dude, I'm taking off the fucking hat because I got to wrestle with this guy. I don't right. have a choice. I'm calling the officer at the next stop to be ready yeah. to help me get this guy because this guy was like 6'4 at least. 
But I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, you know, I just got the uniform out of the cleaners, bro. I'm nice and clean, and now I got, you know, so yeah. I'm pissed, dude. I get a fucking phone call, and I and I happen to glance at it. I was, I'm, if I wouldn't have glanced at it, I would have been here. But for some reason, I glanced at it, and it was my 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 agent. Very late for her to call me. Normally, any calls from her tend to be early, so that was unusual. And dude, and I'm looking at the phone, and I'm looking at this dude, and something I said, bro, I've been trying to tell you for a while that you're not supposed to be doing what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And I'm not a religious guy. And, and something said, just answer the phone. Dude, I picked up the phone. Right in the middle. And I mean, people are looking because when he called me a bitch, everybody was like, okay, now what you gonna do? So now I'm put in a spot where I gotta do something. Dude, I answer, hello? She's screaming at the top of her lungs. Yep. Because if you remember, all the main actors, the majority of it, were all from, uh, from LA? either LA. Mm -hmm. That was the only main character that was out of Miami. Which meant that whatever agent booked that in Miami, that was for them like winning the lotto. Yeah. So I, I don't remember, talent, the talent group I think was the name of the agency. Dude, she's screaming at the top of her lungs. Oh my God, you booked it, you booked it. I'm like, booked what? The book, the, the film about the cars. I'm like, yeah, okay, well, you know, all right, good. All right, I got something to deal with. No, 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 you gotta tell me right now if you accept the job, it's gonna require th th that you either take a leave of absence or, or quit your job. I'm like, wait, what? No, I mean, I got a job. What are you talking about? You're going to make this amount of money? I said, wait, what? <laughs> um, are you serious? And she was like, yeah. And I said, let me call you right back. And dude, again, for a while I had been getting this thing that kept saying, bro, you're not listening to what I want you to do. You're doing what you want to do. And I'm so conservative. I don't like to take risks. And something said, Roberto, do it. Do it. And dude... We pull up and this big officer was coming in to give me a help, man. I put on my fucking hat. I walked up to the door. I said, bitch, you can smoke that whole pack for all I care. And fuck you. I walked out. The big dude's walking. I said, don't even worry about it, bro. I jumped on the train going back. It's now about 5.15, 15 minutes at work now. Mm -hmm. Went up to the fifth floor and I gave him my two-week notice. Just like that. And dude, that was a big step for me because, the, oh, I'm, I'm very, I, I got to have a job. You have to work. You have to, for me to take that gamble. I didn't know what the fuck Too Fast was going to be. Yeah. But it was just me taking that leap of faith at that moment that changed everything for me. I Sorry love, for the long. No, the long no, time. it's great. I love how, though, um, I knew some of that story because I remember you telling, sharing that with me when we were down there. And um, I don't know, I don't think, I, I think I was hired to be like your stand-in right. or Moe's or, or I both of yours. Mine, maybe. And I ended up being everybody's. Yeah. But, um, and the camera guy, because you actually given you a camera. And I found the footage the other day. You actually what? recorded what? some behind the scenes stuff from Too Fast. You got to share that with me. It was like an eight millimeter camera or something. I, man, I don't even, yeah. that's amazing. Um, but you, um, you, you're saying, I'm not a religious person, but you're spiritual. Yes, yeah, yeah. You know. I believe in just positive energy, right. just putting it out there, whatever you want, put it out there. I think that if, if you do good things, good things will happen. If you're an asshole, asshole things are going to happen. Sure. Just, I'm on that vibe. Eventually, yeah. the asshole things are going to happen to you. Yeah. Um, that film, it, it's where we first met, and it was, uh, it, was, uh, it was a crazy experience, and it was really all about... I just kept hearing the other guys all saying this is you know that the, the the set was chaotic and it was you know not being run the way a traditional film would be and mm -hmm. like this the veteran like the the behind the scenes guys the dp and and jeff like because that movie was a party it yeah. almost felt like yeah. and when paul walker the first day were you when we were there when we were filming in, in little haiti no the my first day was uh we shot in el versailles Ever, oh, at the restaurant the restaurant well, I'd never done this before. I'd never been, I got there by accident. I was, a, a girl that I was dating at the time was in an elevator with a second unit AD. She was coming down Lincoln Road to apply for a job. He started talking to her. She said, oh, my, my boyfriend's an actor. He came out and he said, you're an actor? He goes, I go, yes, sir. And he's like, do you do any standing work? I was like, yeah. <laughs> Not knowing probably what that was, like, but yeah. And he's work. like, go upstairs and tell casting that I sent you and so and then and I literally worked the next I think like it was the very next day mm. um, and we we're filming in Little Haiti and it was 
the whole neighborhood showed up to this film set. Yeah. If you can imagine, yeah. they're building a production. Yeah. Little Haiti and Paul Walker and Tyrese and all those guys are going to be there. Word got out fast. Yeah. And it was nerve-wracking because there wasn't enough security. There wasn't enough cops. Um, and I've never been on a, anything more than a, you know, been on like some small films as background, but this was a big deal. Right. Um, and it was such a big deal for, for you because I've, you left, you came here, and basically you've, you've been consistently working. Basically, right? Well, it took a minute uh, because uh, a pro once we were done rapping, I didn't know what to do now. Right. Because I almost worked on that thing for almost three months. So now it was like, what do I do now? Do I go back to work? Well, I, I don't know. Right. So my agent was like, I know that you don't understand this, Roberto, but what has happened to you doesn't happen every day. You won the lotto in this thing. Yeah. People that have been in the game 20 years haven't done what you just did. So, so she said, if I were you, I would ride this train and see where it goes. Yeah. And again, it took me coming out of my comfort zone to say, go where to L.A.? I've, I've never been to L.A. I've not, why would I? You have to be in L.A. for this. And dude, when she told me that, I said, you know what? Let me, let me ride this thing and see what happens. Threw all my stuff in storage, jumped in my Ford Explorer. Mo Galini, who played uh, my partner in the film, yep. uh, a beautiful person, said, listen, you come to L.A., man, you stay with me until you get yourself situated. And sure enough, man, February 14th, 2003, I arrived in L.A. And in the beginning, it was slow, only because the film hadn't come out yet. I had no credits. Nobody knew who I was. Right. It wasn't until the film came out that then people were like, okay. I'll see them. But even then, it was a slow process. I was with a really good agency. Um, and they were sending me out on like major, major shit. Yeah. Um, but I felt like I wasn't ready. I hadn't taken any class. And, you know, I got lucky, man. You know, I felt like, you know, I need to start from the bottom. So I ended up leaving this bigger agency and going to a smaller one where they were going to send me out on the one liners because I felt like I need to learn. I need to learn this game. And that's just what the formula that worked for me and then that's when i started boom 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 slowly but it took a couple of years to get some kind of momentum going the i watch your your posts <clears throat> you're always working on either you're working on a script working on a character writing you're really dedicated to your craft and that's probably why you know you've you know have had as much success as you have because a lot of people come out to act um and I, I, you know, they party too much. They fuck mm -hmm. around. They're not in classes. I'm guilty of that. <clears throat> yeah. And doing those things. But I've never, you know, I'm the 20 years that I've been watching you, like, it always seems like, it's, you know, you're always somewhere doing something, appearing uh, on red carpets and um, participating in the game and also, you know, like going to the gym, man. You're always just working out on your your acting chops, your writing chops. Yeah. I think um, it, it's, it's been a process for me. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't enjoy red carpets. I don't. But I understand that it's the nature of the beast. Yeah, man. it's part you of have, the business. You have to do it. Um, but yeah, you know, I'm not comfortable with that. Um, and the writing has been recent, again, because of the short film. And then before that, I had the other short film that I wrote about the search for my mom. So that's, you know, that's, that's the connection with the writing there. As far as like working out and stuff like that, man, you know, my, my dad was on the Cuban national judo team for judo, six degree black belt. So I think a lot of that physical fitness thing is in my genes from that. Uh, I'm a big Bruce Lee fan when I was a kid. Then I was in the military. So working out has always been just a part of it. Did you play basketball? I played basketball too, yeah. In high school, college? I played, uh, I played uh, in high school, a uh, good ball player. Um, very good defensively, and I still averaged almost 20 points a game. I was like, but I was a defensive stopper. But my head was all over the place. The issues with my mom and lack of direction mm -hmm. uh, ended up uh, getting me into the military. That's how I ended Looking up in the for military. Direction. And then in the military, again, I struggled there in the beginning with uh, authority, just people. You know, once I got away from that situation at home, now I go into the military and all these other people mm. are telling me what to do. And I had a hard time with that for the first couple of years. But then um, I'm, uh, uh, on the one boat that I was in, I met a guy from Miami that I used to play basketball at the park with. 
And he kind of got me back into basketball. Then I started playing again, and then I, one year I played for the All-Navy team, which is the better players in the Navy when they compete against uh, European players, European leagues, uh, other armed forces. And that's kind of like ultimately the basketball was what put me back on track to just growing and learning and just calming down. You know, that's Before I forget, thank you for your service. Oh, brother, you're welcome, man. You're welcome. Um, and rolling up, I saw your cap um, yeah. in the window you served in. Desert Storm. Yeah. What years were that? Oh, shoot, that was 90. Uh, 90 through 92, I think it was, for me. Um, I was in the service from 85 to 96. Oh, you were in for a while. I was in for 11 and a half years. Um, and it's so cool, man, because uh, about a month ago, we had our 33-year reunion. I saw some of those pictures. That was cool. And listen, I've, I've got brain lapses about that time frame for whatever reason. But going back and then seeing some of these guys, I was like, ooh, I recognize the face. And it, with everybody, it was the same thing. But then we started talking and then the stories. So I was glad that I went, man, because it helped to uh, fill in those gaps that I have about that time period. So that was pretty cool. Um, now that, you know, I know some of you, you're becoming this sort of celebrity and you're becoming a statesman. I, I pulled off your inner, um, Instagram um, and you touched on this the other day briefly, and we don't have to go too into it, but your affiliation with um, National Alliance of Ment on Mental Illness. Mm. And I saw that you were invited and you were a speaker. And um, <laughs> you know, the story, uh, the story that I wrote about my mom was that, you know, it, it, this, it was all true. I, I had not spoken to her for about 11 years. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then um, a friend of mine, his, my best friend, his mother was ill. She was like a second mom to me. And that made me start reflecting on the relationship with my mom and the lack of. So I decided to search for her. Uh, got somebody that was uh, part of the of a Miami Metro Dade, uh, one of the chiefs there, helped me to find her. And it took about three weeks. And sure enough, man, I'm... Um, I'm on the set. No, I'm going to set. So I'm on the 101 driving. And my best friend, who was the medium, the mediator, mm -hmm. called me and said, hey, man, I need to talk to you. I said, well, bro, I'm, I'm driving. I'm going to work. He said, no, I need to talk to you. Can you pull over? Dude, I pull over. I'm like, well, bro, what do you want? He said, yo, we found her. Mm -hmm. What? You found my mom? We found her. Dude, after 11 years, I had no, I just knew that maybe she was in Miami. That's all I knew. And dude, I just, I lost it. I just start, you know, I start getting excited. Oh my God, I got to call my brother. Oh my God, he's going to freak out. I got to tell my cousin. He's trying to get my attention. He's like, yo, but listen. No, man, but don't, oh my God, should I call him now? Should, he's like, yo, listen to me. We found her, but she died six months ago. So, I wanted to do this film so that people would hopefully watch it and realize that you need to evaluate relationships in your life because every relationship is not supposed to work and that's fine but if there's a way to fix it i strongly recommend that you do that because what you don't want to do is always say i want to call you i want to call you and you don't and then the day that you do is too late that's that shit is is hard to deal with so I did the film because of that. The film started doing very well in the festival. Thank God people got the message. People were doing the Q&As afterwards. were coming up to me. Oh my God, I'm going to pick up the phone. I'm going to call this person, that person. Beautiful. And then um, the Alliance of Mental Health reached out to me. They heard about the film. They said, we'd love to show it at the University of Miami. Bunch of doctors. And uh, I said, okay, sure. Yeah, I'll show the film and talk a little bit. I don't know what they... These are doctors. I don't know what I'm going to say about them, about movie industry. But dude... I could, I could, even now, you, you know, I'm having trouble talking about it. But during these Q&As, man, I would break down. I just couldn't talk about my mom. And it wasn't until I went to that alliance that I got on stage afterwards. And I'm looking at these medical professionals, man. They look wearing suits and ties and these people that are not normally my, my, my core group of people. And it wasn't until I stood up in front of him and I said, I want to share something with you that I haven't told anybody. I hadn't told my girlfriend. 
I cried this morning. I cried an hour ago. And I don't know why. And when I leave here, I'm going to cry again. And I broke down. And it, I think that it was me sharing that, that vulnerability with a bunch of strangers that did something to where it allows me to speak about it. But you, you know, even now, I still have trouble with it, but it's a lot better than what it was. So for me, that movie uh, was very important. Uh, it got the message out. And, and, I'll, and I'll say it now, man, is, and I'm not trying to preach or anything, but if you have a relationship with somebody, man, think about it. Is, is it worth trying to fix? Is it worth trying to, hey, man, can we, can we fix whatever we got going on? And if you can't, good. But at least we talked about it. The film is called? The Terms of Us. Is there somewhere online people can find it now, or is it still on uh, it, it actually got distribution, man. It's on, uh, they show it periodically on Shorts TV. Okay. Yeah. Um, you saying that I, over the years, my relationship with God or spirituality, I, I, I was raised Catholic. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Some of that still, you know, sticks with me in the ways that I worship or pray. But um, we were talking earlier about God and, you know, I said, I asked you if you were religious and, or spiritual. You telling me that story, I've been going through some issues back home. You asked me if I had been in Miami mm -hmm. and I haven't and because of some bullshit. Sure. And every day when I go on my runs, I think about that bullshit. Sure. And I think to myself, I got to pick up the phone. My wife is constantly telling me. You got to pick up the phone. And I never pick up the phone. And it's so easy to just not pick up the phone. Later today when you leave, <clears throat> I'm going to go pick up the phone. Thank you, bro. Thank you. Thank you for that. And trust me, whether you resolve it or not, you're going to be glad you picked up the phone. Yeah. Um, it's good. I, you know, just uh, movies. And uh, you never know. Uh, even, you know, when you ask me, oh, you're an interviewer now. Or you talk to people. What I've learned is um, you never know who you're talking to and the words that come out of your mouth will forget and you'll say something that totally has an impact on somebody mm. um, and, um, and it you know, affects your life you know, uh, in some shape, but sometimes you have a huge impact on people. Yeah. Um, and I guess like with your film, especially the terms of us, you, know, you, you touched on a few things for people that to get invited to the University of Miami is pretty prestigious. Yeah. Yeah. Um, especially for uh, you know for any film yeah. but a short film that um, um, it just doesn't happen you, you've had like a really kind of a, an interesting career you know because the lottery and getting pulled into the film and then you know also I don't know anybody else who's ever been invited to talk at you know a, a university like that based on a, on a on a short film maybe a major film yeah. So maybe there's something you know, that writing, man. It's, you just said <laughs> something about, well, you know, I, I think it's a story that, that so many of us can relate to because we all have that. And, uh, and, you know, there's somebody in our family that we've, you know, got issues with or whatever. Yeah. But there's something that you said a second ago about that some things that we say can affect people. Uh, this, was, this was years ago, maybe eight years ago. Uh, I, I would often get people that wanted me to autograph uh, a photo like a Fast and Furious, Too Fast, Too Furious photo. Mm -hmm. And it just, uh, I, all right, bro, I'll send you one. And half the time I wouldn't. And I, not because I'm an asshole. It's just, why do you want my signature? It was just some of that going on. Right. I'm like, hey, listen, bro, it's, this is all make-believe. It was just some of that. Dude, and I got this one request from this woman who said, hey, my kid, you know, is, is a big fan of yours. The kid meaning he's early 20s. But, you know, he loves that film. Oh, my God, he watches this all the time. Could you please send us an autograph picture? Hit me through uh, Facebook, I think it was. Uh, okay, I'll, uh, yeah, sure, I'll, I'll do it. But do something told me, oh, fuck it, do what? Do it. I sent the, uh, I signed it, I sent it to that address. I think it was less than a month later, I got an email from her, uh, no, a Facebook message to her with a picture of her son with my picture holding it and this young man died two weeks after he got the photo I guess he was suffering from some form of leukemia mm -hmm. so he, he was like at the at 
at that stage when she but she never told me that and when i saw that picture i just it's something it did something to me and it made me realize dude it doesn't matter what you th how you think you affect people People are going to get, get affected by you and don't take that for granted. Look at what you might have done for this young man his last two weeks. Something that you think is nothing could mean a world to somebody else. Yep. So that taught me a hard lesson of, you know, people see you in however they see you and appreciate it, acknowledge it. And if there's a way that you can reciprocate that or share that with somebody, do it. Because it can make, it can make a world of difference to somebody else. Yeah. yeah you know we you know we all have our interpretations of who we are and then we got a normal you know people that aren't in, in in show business or in the media right we we live our lives you know i guess normally but when you put your work out there um and people can watch it uh all over the world um people start creating ideas who they think you are yeah. or what your work you know, might mean to them because of where they are in their lives. Mm -hmm. um, and you have an impact on them, um, you know, mo hopefully most of the time positively, sometimes, you know, negatively. It always cracks me up when um, you s people that, I don't know, in these Marvel movies that play, you know, horrible villains and then they start getting hate mail mm -hmm. for being a villain. Right. <laughs> and uh, it's like, dude, I'm just, I'm just an actor. I didn't write this shit. Yeah. I'm just... I got a job. I showed yeah. up. I was, yeah. <laughs> my yeah. agent called. Yeah. You're a bad guy. Sounds good. Um, you like this last movie? You're into comics. Are you yeah. really into comics? Yeah, I um, I grew up, you know, reading comic books like most kids. Um, I used to spend hours and hours drawing. I'm a pretty good artist. We used to be. So I would spend hours and hours drawing. And uh, over the years, you know, I've collected. I've stopped. I've collected. And then in 2020, filming in Mexico. That's bad acting right there. You both don't want to drink at the same time. <laughs> filming in Mexico. Yeah, filming in Mexico. And there was another actor there. I don't know if you know him. His name is uh, Danny Arroyo. Sounds familiar. If you see his face, I'm sure you probably know him. Mm -hmm. um, uh, really talented actor and a, and, a, and, a, and a very, very, very sweet guy. So anyway, we started talking about comic books and he got me back excited about it. So then I started buying like high-end expensive books, like already graded and everything. So... It's been like two years now where I've been back into this world of comics, like heavy into it. So that kind of, you know, I wanted to tell a story, you know, honoring that genre and incorporate a story about a boy that's being bullied, being bullied by some other kids and put it together. And that's how that kind of came to, to be. Going back to the story, you know, my father, um, you had your dad, right? Mm hmm. Um, my father, I will, what I took from the film, I remember I, I was telling you earlier, I went to 13 schools. I, I, lived, I, I lived all over Miami and went to schools ev almost every year, sometimes twice in a year. Right. And uh, my, you know, I was a little fat kid and uh, my dad said to me, he said, look, the first person that fucks with you at school, mm -hmm. you gotta kick his ass. <laughs> because if you don't <laughs> kick his ass on the first day, they're all gonna mess with you. And after that, it doesn't matter if you start fighting back, they're just gonna think they can taunt you. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Or be really funny. And I wasn't terribly funny. And um, I remember I would go to school, especially after learning those lessons, because oh, I'll just be the nice guy. And then it's like the first guy fucks with you and it's like the rest of the year, it's like wedgies, wedgies, wedgies. Yeah. And I'm like, all right, I go to the new school and I'm like, I'm gonna fuck somebody up. Yeah. And now with my son, uh, who's uh, uh, 12, you know, I kind of try to give him the same, don't fight if you don't have to. Yeah. Always avoid the fight. Don't pick on somebody, you know, don't be abusive. But there's always, uh, at school, you know, we live in, our time is, um, you know, well, you know, did, who hit who first? Mm. And so my kid comes with me, comes to me with that. It's like, well, what, do I wait for them to hit me? And I'm like, if you just feel the threat, you feel like they're gonna hit you if they're yeah. saying they're gonna hit you yeah, and they're yeah, walking yeah. towards you yeah. like just just hit them you know i'll deal with the the school principal you yeah. know and i'll deal with that bullshit for you no yeah. um did you have issues you know you said you were writing that scene given the times that we live in you know where everything i feel is like 
everything is trying to be more passive and like you know don't fight or who hit who first and the way um, that the world is yeah um because for me personally that's what i loved about it when i first started watching it it, you said no, dude. You gotta. What you say? Kick that, you gotta. You gotta yeah. kick his ass. And I was like, yes. Yeah. I think that you know w w when I look at my my life experience and and somehow make that connection with the writing of the film. Um, no, nah, man. When I was growing up, I was fighting. I was fighting, and I didn't care if you picked up picked on me or not. I was gonna fight you anyway. Mm -hmm. I was just an angry kid. Uh, going into the military, I was always in trouble because I was always fighting somebody. So I came from that world of, bro, if you even look at me funny, you ain't got to walk up. You look at me funny, we fight. It right. was that stupidity. Um, and then, of course, as you get older, you start to just soften a little bit. Then you move out to L.A. Right. Everything here is a little bit more relaxing. So that helped me. So I think some of that is in the writing and that, sure, initially you're like, yeah, you know, somebody, you know, this is what you do. But then you realize that, you know, this is an opportunity to, to show this, this young person that, it, it can't be about fighting. Do everything you can to avoid that at all costs. Right, and, and this kid is not... And you can, when you look at him, you can tell... He's not the aggressor. Yeah, yeah. He, he tries to. Yeah. He's asking them, hey, why are you, why are you picking on me? Yeah. What did I do you? Yeah. Like, uh, what do you, you know, si, uh, how do we say in Spanish? Um, si, uh, si, me, si me vas buscando, te voy, me vas a encontrar. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. 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 Is there anything that you want to mention before... I kick you out oh um before you kick me out i don't know uh oh i'm on uh, the show that i'm on it's a really good show uh, right you're a series regular yeah no uh, recurring. No. recurring recurring yeah. whatever he's on yeah. tv regularly yeah um what yeah. show is this so it's uh it's uh miss american pie mm -hmm. with an incredible cast man uh kristen wig um laura dern allison jenny um uh you know ricky martin uh and then of course bro uh, Carol Burnett yeah which for me when I met her on set bro that for 20 years in this game and that was the moment yeah. meeting this woman and uh, it's just a really funny show had a great time shooting it um, hopefully we'll be done here in November and it's gonna be uh, on Paramount Plus so very um, excited yeah you've worked it's iconic John Singleton's iconic you know Paul Walker is iconic uh, yeah. um Watching Cole Hauser now on. Do you watch Yellowstone? Um, once in a blue moon. Once in a blue once moon. Once in a blue moon. Yeah. Um, it, Where every it's interesting watching how everybody has well, kind of evolved. Yeah. Mo, even yeah, you know, like Mo, yeah. like you know he's he's uh he's recurring on something as well that just started airing. I don't remember, I don't know the name of the show, but he's been doing well. I mean. Yeah, I mean all those guys. Um, sort of have you know kind of evolved it's been 20 years yeah um it blows my mind that i've been out here this long and um yeah. and watching guys like you um you, you again the things you don't see what's going on with people but you know i i, I think right when i got here i might have reached out to you we talked a little bit back and forth you know and you're figuring your own shit out um mo as well um you know Paul uh, Walker gave me, introduced me to his managers. They took two meetings with me when mm. I moved out here. But like you, nice. I, didn't, I didn't know anything. Yeah. I'm like sitting here and going, yeah, I'm, I'm here. Yeah. I'm arrived. You know, where's the set? Um, I, a lot of good came out of that, that crew and a lot of them are doing really well. And being, you know, having been around you for these last 20 years and watching you grow, you know, it just it goes to show like, you know, don't be an asshole. You know, work on your craft. You yeah. know, stick to what you want to stick at, because you're you're like, you're. It's like it's if it hasn't, you're there. You know what I mean? Like that, whatever your dream role is, or series regular, or you know, starring, Roberto. Hope you keep the Sands Sanchez. Mm, yeah. It's is how close have you gotten? Um, I I, I think that that's that's. Even that is subjective because there's people that do come here with the hopes of doing this, doing mm -hmm. that, whatever. With me, again, because I started late, I have a different work ethic, a different frame of mind. So my frame of mind has always been, I just want to be a working actor. Right. That I don't want to have to do anything else other than acting. And that's my goal. And that's what I've been doing for the past 14 years. So as far as I'm concerned, this is the, yeah, that's it. Now, some roles suck. 
Oh. Haven't been that great. Some have been great. Right. You know, I've been recurring. I've, I've done get a ton of different things. But to me, it's not about being uh, recognized. It's not about being a superstar of any shape or form. To me, it's always just been, I just want to be a working actor. Right. That's being, it. being a celebrity, what I, I forget who said it, but somebody said that being a celebrity, I mean, it's great, but really what it does, it helps open the door, right? You have more visibility. It's like the same way you pulled um, um, the, the young guy from the film, what was his name, Caleb? Caleb, yeah. Yeah, you, you know, you saw him. It's like, that's the guy. The more work you work, the more people see you, mm -hmm. and the easier it is for, it's like, oh, we got this role, and somebody's reading and go, oh, no, no, we don't even got to cast this shit. Call Roberto. Mm -hmm. You know, I know Roberto's going to be perfect for this. Yeah. Right, have you gotten to the point where you just... I get offers. You get offers? Bit. Yeah, I get offers a lot. Um... Fortunately, thank you yeah. for that. Um, yeah, and again, that that's something that comes with with it. But I, again, ultimately, it's it's just about working and working and and just making sure that you are taking the proper steps that you need for when those moments come, you're ready. Um, you know, that's that's something that I had to make a choice about, and I think it's different for everybody. I always had three or four jobs. Mm -hmm. Even when I was modeling, when I was doing after the service and I was doing the commercials, I still had three or four jobs because I've just always been taught to work, work, work. But then there came a time, I wish I could tell you exactly when it was. It was a few years after I got here because I got here and I started working as a personal trainer. It got to a point where I had to say, Roberto, you got to go all in. Because the fact that you're not going all in because you have another job and you have all these other things perhaps psych uh, subconsciously maybe you're saying you're not going for it because you're good so for me and it's different for everybody else and right. i would never tell anybody hey leave your job i would never do that but for me it worked when i said you know what i gotta trust that this is going to work so i gotta let go of that 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 anchor that i've always had so that's a tough, tough choice to make, right. you know, and I've got two kids and it was during the time when the, you know, them two kids were coming up and they're expensive, you know how that is. But I just felt that in, for me personally, that in order for me to make it here, I got to do this as if I've got nothing else to fall on, fall back on. That's great advice. I, and I, I, looking back on my life, you know, uh, I love what I'm doing. I can't, for once in my life, everything that I'm doing with my business or this or that, I, 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 even I miss show business and working you know on getting back involved in it but it's nice when you're just kind of doing what you want to be doing mm -hmm. not have to go fucking wait tables not have to be an uber driver not have no. to be a personal trainer no. um but that's the beauty of this is that so many people come here pursuing mm -hmm. their dream whatever that is and it's usually something in the entertainment but you never know where life's journey is going to take you mm -hmm. i mean you're now doing very well doing what you're doing now maybe this will allow you to get to a point where you can say now i'm going to chill out and i'm going to really pursue whatever else you want to pursue sure. so everything happens for a reason i think you just have to understand when that moment comes and and it's that 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 thing telling you hey buddy stop doing what you want to do and do what i'm telling you to do yeah so i mean you never know where, where this journey takes us you know who knows i mean i was in the service and i ended up doing this maybe one day i'll stop doing this and become a hairstylist who knows you know, and it was, and it was because of the connections I made here. Who knows? Man? Right. Who knows? Yeah, I, you have to be open. Yeah, you have to be open and don't fight a camino. Don't be so rigid, like like I was. Yeah. What's your IG? Oh, bro. Oh. you know I'm not good at that. Um, that's Instagram, right? IG. Yeah. Um, official underscore Roberto underscore Sanchez. All right, we'll have Jomar post it. Um, the most interesting Cuban I know. That's your hashtag. Yeah, I'm the most interesting Cuban I know. I don't <laughs> care what you say. <laughs> um, it's a joke, by the way. It's a joke. I, I think he's pretty interesting. Yeah. You're definitely the most interesting Cuban I know. Thank you. Um, yeah. Thanks for coming over. For sure, man. This was fun, man. All right, brother. Appreciate you, brother. All right. Till next time. Peace.